Good morning and happy Friday, everyone. So as we always do, I just want to mention that this call will be recorded. And if you don't want to be recorded, uh, you may want to drop off now. OK, and we will place the recording on our YouTube channel. So I hope everybody is having a wonderful day. Um, we are going to be talking about some of the Ignite updates. So if you don't know, Ignite is Microsoft Premier Conference. It happens every year in the fall. Uh, and a lot of new product and uh, announcements and a lot of enhancements announcements happen in those uh, in this conference and this year is no exception last week if you remember uh, we covered some of the infrastructure apps and infrastructure update and this uh, week we are going to cover uh, some of the updates related to data and AIPs and some of these updates are so significant that I'm pretty sure we are going to be uh, covering them in uh, you know in separate sessions so uh, definitely I mean more detail I mean I think they require uh, maybe an in-depth review of what they are so this is uh, one of my favorite update it is Azure database flexible server so first of all every time whenever we have a PaaS database offering a number of time customers said that okay you know I need high memory. I need more, more CPU, less RAM. I need more storage. And I think uh, those PaaS offering were kind of addressing those scenarios. But in a number of cases, customer needed more flexibility. They needed more uh, flexibility around updates. They needed more control at, at the same time, needed more elasticity and all that stuff. So this is the Azure Database Flexible Server. It is a new database offering. Uh, so basically, if you go and create a MySQL, Azure MySQL uh, database, you will now see two things. You will see MySQL and Flexible Server. And with this one, this is available for MySQL and Postgres. A few of the things that you can do, the biggest is you can pick your hardware size and you can change it. So let's say that today you start small, picked up um, like um, your compute size uh, to two core, four GB RAM, things like that. And tomorrow you said, OK, no, I need more uh, RAM, more uh, CPU. You can increase it. At the same time, you can shut down your database. You can turn it off. So let's say you are, it's a dev test workload. You turn off the database. Your storage still there. Yes, you're paying for the storage, but your database is out. OK, so that's how you can see cost. So this is a very powerful, uh, I think, offering. Currently, it is in public preview for both, um, um, you know, for MySQL and Postgres. So, you know, um, take a look at it and see, um, you know, how you can take advantage of that. Second one, so a number of um, customers who are using Redis Cache on-prem and they're used to some of the enterprise feature, they wanted the same enterprise features in the cloud. So these are the new tiers that are now available in the cloud. They are enterprise and enterprise flash. They bring up the same capability that you have with the, um, with the Azure with the Redis Cache Enterprise now available in the cloud with private endpoints and you know with uh, all the enterprise features that um, you know the all the kind of a security feature that enterprises are looking for it's now available so you can take full advantage of it it's available for you to use it's currently in public preview and one of the big thing is the SLA, look at the SLA. It has gone up from 99.9 to 99.99. So that's that's one of the big, big advantage of uh, kind of uh, using this, uh, um, this new uh, feature or this new tier. So this is basically a new tier. So if you go to the Azure uh, Redis cache, for example, um, you will see this uh, new tier there. 
Actually, let's uh, show it to you one second. Uh, this here's so if I go in here, you see these are the two new tiers which have been announced, and these are there. Okay, and uh, this is basically towards the high end of uh, services, and it supports a number of uh, things like Redis cluster and uh, you know Redis Redis search and all that. So definitely, you can take advantage of those. Any questions so far? OK. I think um, it's a no uh, secret that Microsoft is making big investments in terms of uh, our presence on the edge. And, um, you know, this is we had Azure IoT Edge um, product, which kind of sits on the edge and take a lot of uh, stuff closer to where the devices are so they don't have to you know go back all the way back to the cloud and come back so a lot of processing can happen closer to where uh, the action is where the device is with azure sql edge this brings this basically brings optimization to the iot workload it brings sql the capabilities of azure sql you know it's the same code base as sql server and azure sql it brings those capabilities closer to the edge. So basically you don't have to if you have like a device that kind of doing data processing, you don't have to bring all that data back in uh, to the cloud. You can do a lot of processing with Azure SQL Edge um, at, at the edge. So that's that's the thing. OK, this is I'm sure you heard about it. Azure Cosmos DB serverless. So this is serverless offering. This has now gone GA. So this is a new consumption based model if you're not aware of it. And this is. For an, a number of uh, customers uh, said, I mean, they, what they wanted was something that they can use for workloads, which are um, kind of uh, not a heavy duty workloads where they thought that um, using Cosmos TP was a bit more expensive. And in those cases where you have occasional workloads with, uh, sorry, small workloads with occasional burst, this is a good option to use, you know. Um, and it kind of uh, gives you the flexibility to take advantage of a modern NoSQL database without uh, paying too much of a cost. OK, so this is the uh, access based lifecycle management. So this is one of the uh, once again, one of the big ask uh, on Azure, how we can provide. In Azure, we can provide a feature where. When the resource was last accessed, so we are providing this capabilities first for blob storage where you can set the lifecycle uh, uh, policies for Azure Blob using Azure, um, you know, access based lifecycle management. So you can say, OK, if that blob hasn't been accessed for, let's say. Five months or six months, let's move to a different tier so you can now make those decisions based on that. This is currently just gone into uh, public preview, you know. Uh, and since it's a metadata, you know, you can make other decisions on that. I mean, you maybe you may kind of a write an Azure function or a logic app. OK, you know, these blobs, these are there for six months. I just want to delete them. That's it. I mean, you know, I don't need to kind of I don't need to use these blobs so I can just delete them. So these are uh, these are some of the things that you can do uh, to take advantage of uh, this this new feature. OK. So if you have uh, used a cognitive search, it used to be called Azure search. Then we added a lot of cognitive features, merge it uh, with kind of uh, took features from cognitive services and you know 
put it in Azure Cognitive Search to provide a you know a best of breed search experience. This is now um, provides the two key feature. Number one, private endpoints. And I just want to mention it's not just private endpoint because it's two things. First of all, you can access Azure Search over a private endpoint. That's one thing. The second thing is Azure Search can connect to your resources which are inside a virtual network. Okay. So this is very important to understand that this is not just private connectivity at the front end. Now, if you have, let's say, Azure Search, uh, Cognitive Search set up, and you have resources that are living inside a VNet, uh, it can access those resources. Before, it has to be, you have to make those resources publicly, I mean, you know, over the uh, public uh, IP. They have to have public IP, not anymore. So this is one of the impo very important features. Second thing is managed identity. So this uh, you can connect. So one is network connectivity. The second is how you authenticate to the data source that you want to index. With, uh, with the managed identity, you can connect to those sources. You can connect them over uh, using managed identity you know, without having to enter a user ID password and all that information. So this is once again very important, very important for the enterprise. Um, large enterprises, we are very security conscious and they don't want to, you know, have these um, kind of uh, data all. Uh, they have a presence in uh, on as in the cloud. Conscious. They need this security mechanism to put you know, uh, their con uh, customer as well as, uh, you, know, uh, you know, auditors at ease. So that's that's a big, big thing. So I'm going to stop for a minute. Any questions? Okay. So since we have a little bit of time, um, I want to go back and show you the Azure SQL um, experience. So first of all, uh, I'm going to go here. So this is the Flex experience that I was talking about. This is the Flex experience that I was uh, talking about. So if I so currently this is off. If I turn it on, it's going to take a second to turn on. So while it's turning on, let's go back to the slide deck and then we can come in. And so as you can see, this was turned off. There is no there is no CPU utilization, nothing. And this is the configuration I was using. Burstable uh, one core, two GB RAM, you know, very, very uh, small, maybe good for some um, what we call, um, you know, dev test workloads. So let, when it come back, we will take a look at it uh, again. Um, but let's go back to the slide deck quickly and let's go to. So machine learning, there are, are new enhancements in machine learning. What we are trying to do is we are trying to democratize more and more this whole machine learning, how you create models and all that, making it easier for user to do that. And that's the goal of machine learning, where you don't have to worry about writing complex algorithm and if you can start with just with drag and drop, just like logic app style experience. So that's what machine learning is. And it's basically, and there are more enhancements. There is integration with ML flow, which is an you know, open source, uh, you know, for platform for ML um, machine learning um, management of life cycle for machine learning. So these are kind of things that um, that has been done in regards to the machine learning uh, space. Customers can take advantage of it. Any Navid, questions? can I add one point here? Yeah, yeah, please. Yeah. So on the ML assisted leveling, um, you know, that is something. Uh, it's not GA yet. But a lot of customers who are looking for a complete solution for uh, AWS ground truth, uh, 
this would be our integrated solution for uh, the leveling, uh, which is expected to be GA um, in uh, Q1 2021. Thank you. And by the way, Kaushik, while you are here, why don't you, I mean, if you have any other updates, since you are more close to data on these uh, particular things, I mean, any more detail that you want to share? Please. Yeah, so uh, one, uh, another thing is uh, from the private link standpoint, that is one of the focus, uh, you know, the both the designer and AutoML uh, having that, that has been integrated for some time. However, the private link, if any of the customers are looking for, uh, you know, that feature, it uh, should be available by now. Uh, this week, it should have been available, most of it, um, with the workspace and all the compute clusters, compute instances, everything should be behind private link. And also, there was another uh, feature uh, which was supposed to be coming in preview, um, by the um, by the 30th of September was the pass through authentication to the storage from the machine learning workspace, uh, which is planned to be GA on again uh, end of the year, uh, but should have been available. I uh, have not checked yet. Um, so enterprise readiness point of view, um, we should be all set for the machine learning. Um, you know, both the um, SDK as well as the UI, um, you know, with all the private link uh, enabled features. Thank you. Thank you, Kaushik. So uh, in regards to the Azure Bats uh, bot service, uh, you know, there are more enhancements. I think the big one is the Alexa channel integration. It's now GA, uh, so you can, integrate with Alexa and kind of uh, go with that. There are some other miscellaneous updates in regards to Databricks. Uh, that is now built on uh, Azure. The, the new engine is built on a Spark 3. And there are some new enhancements there to gain more performance, uh, you know, uh, more um, better cost optimization and all. So definitely that's something uh, to take a look at. So this is like a high level. I have uh, still have the slide link of uh, slide link of Ignite 2020 book of news. So you can download that uh, or look at uh, browse it online. Uh, this has all the links of all the updates. And once again, do not uh, forget the Azure update site. Uh, check it out. I mean, they have all new updates as they come in on the Azure update site. So that's a good place to look at. Uh, once again, so this is one one thing I want to show you. First of all, start and stop. You can basically stop this thing and uh, stop paying for any compute. Uh, this this is important. So I can pick all different types of compute. So I can do burstable. I can do journal, memory optimized, and I can. You know, these are all the SKUs that I have uh, available. And this is just in public preview. I'm sure as they move towards GA, they will add more flexibility. So now um, there's no excuse of running a VM. This is, think of it, this is all managed by Azure. You pick your SKU, you can change your SKU as your comp uh, requirement for your application change, go up and down. And at the same time, uh, it's all, uh, you know, all the management is happening on. You don't have to worry about, you know, VMs going down or redundancy and all that. That's all taken care of by Microsoft. Okay, so this is uh, something uh, to uh, keep in mind. The second thing is, in terms of networking, I am connecting over private IP. So from the get-go, it supports private endpoint. So you don't have to worry about, um, kind of connecting, I mean, you can connect over public IP, there's no issue, but it's all built in. So that's that's the network connectivity that goes without saying. So this is, this is another important feature. The third one is maintenance. I can do custom manage schedule, or I can pick my own schedule. That okay, do maintenance 
on a particular day or a particular, uh, you know, and at a particular time, which works for me and I can put in there. So the, these are a few things that this uh, Flex, dem, uh, you know, Flex database, and right now it's available for both MySQL and uh, PostgreSQL. So just uh, take a look at it. Uh, and, uh, and by the way, in terms of the creation experience, once again, very simple. Uh, we can go in here. And once we try to create that, it has now two options, single server, flexible server, okay? So that's uh, basically just in, uh, and that's basically just how uh, you create it. So with that, um, any questions? Well, we have seven minutes. Any questions? Okay, so um, I'm gonna give back everybody their seven minutes back and hope to see everyone next week for another session of Azure Power Lunch. Just keep in mind, um, use uh, go to the website to know what the upcoming sessions are. And this is our YouTube channel. It's the link is there in the presentation to find out uh, what um, the on-demand recording. So thank you very much. And I hope everybody had a wonderful um, weekend. Bye-bye. Thank, thank you, Naveed. Thank you. Have a good day. Good.